The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. Um, my name is Simon Ager. I am the, um, the person behind Omniglot. Some of you might know it. Thank you. <laughs> and um, Omniglot is mainly focused on writing systems, as you may have noticed. So I thought I'd do a, a talk about the history of writing systems, where they all came from, how they developed, what they are, and different types and such like. So, first, we have a definition of writing. What is it? And this is from uh, Florian Kulmus's um, Encyclopedia of Writing Systems. A set of visible or tactile signs used to represent units of language in a systematic way, with the purpose of recording messages which can be retrieved by anyone who knows the language in question and the rules by virtue of which its units can, are encoded in the writing system. So it includes tactile signs because there are <coughs> braille, there's braille and other forms of um, kind of raised tactile scripts for blind people. So this um, you can also use this to, to kind of say, okay, something is a writing system, and something isn't. So there's some scripts and some forms of writing which might not be writing systems, very ancient ones that we don't know what they were, but we'll go into that in a, in a, in a while. So what's writing used for? Well, it's, it seems obvious, doesn't it? Record information and knowledge. In early China, they used it for divination, for asking questions and getting answers from the gods, to write laws and proclamations, commandments, to write agreements, advertising, propaganda, literary, literature, poetry, songs, and everything else. So writing has many uses. It's a very useful thing. Writing materials. The first writing systems were on clay tablets. This is in ancient Sumeria. And about, well, they, the, the actual writing system started in about 3000 BC, but they're using clay tablets to making marks on from about 8000 BC. And clay tablets, they're, they're very useful. You've got clay readily available. It's um, easy to make into a, a writing surface. You can make marks in it with a, a kind of stylus made from reed called a calamus. And clay tablets that, that survive, <coughs> have, uh, uh, those have been baked mostly accidentally. They didn't do this deliberately because they, they used them and then threw them away when they didn't need them anymore. So in some places they have great stores of these clay tablets and there was a big fire and some of them got baked and they preserved, and that's why we still have them. In other places, people wrote on stone, on wood, on metal, and other hard surfaces, and they wrote with sharp implements. And when, when people did that, often their, their style of writing was different, because in a clay tablet, the surface is, is soft, so you can make any kind of mark you want. But in a, in a hard surface, it's hard, so you can only make straight lines, really. So scripts like runes, they, they were made mainly in, in hard surfaces, so they were mainly straight. In Egypt, they used the papyrus reed, and they, they made these into kind of sheets, and they used um, ink and quill pens, and these are preserved because in Egypt it's very dry. So in places, in pyramids and places like that where there were papyrus, some of them survived. So we still have some, some papyrus from ancient Egypt. And then, also in Egypt, they invented parchment, which is it's a bit like leather. It's made from, from um, animal skin, which is stretched, soaked in um, an uh, alkaline solution. Usually, you'd use urine to do that. So it's not a very pleasant process. <laughs> and apparently, in medieval monasteries, the, um, the monks would make their parchment and the best urine was the, the urine of the bishops, because they had the best, best diet. The monks had a very, <laughs> very basic diet, so they, their urine wasn't very good for, for making parchment. And parchment is particularly associated with um, Pergamon in, in um, Turkey, which is now Bergamo. Well, Bergamo, oh, something like that. Does anybody know the modern name for it? Bergamon. Bergamon, yeah. So that's where it came from in Europe, generally. And that appeared in, in ancient Egypt not long after papyrus. Um, 
Then we've got wax on wooden tablets. The Romans and Greeks used these, and also in ancient Anatolia in Turkey from 14th century BC. And they, they had a wooden, wooden frame, and they filled it with wax, and they used a, a stylus to write on it. And then you could wipe it out and write on something, write something else. So quite, quite a useful thing to do. But it's only limited how much you can write, because it's a, a small, small thing. Um, in China, they used bones and shells. They used the, the shoulder blades of oxes, scapula, and turtle shells to write in, in um, very early China. In uh, South Asia, in India, and Southeast Asia, they used palm leaves and birch bark. And they used a pen or a brush and ink. And then in China, they, they eventually got around to inventing paper. And at first, it wasn't used for writing. It was used for many other things. They invented toilet paper as well, and uh, all sorts of other things. But they, they got around to inventing, to um, using it for, for writing in about 200 BC. So um, in ancient Mesopotamia, the first, first writing technology was the clay tablets and the stylus from about 3,600 BC. And they also invented a form of printing, possibly. <laughs> This is uncertain. These, these dates are all, that's why we got this C there, circa from, from Latin around. They're all uncertain. Um, a form of printing was invented in Mesopotamia, which is between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in what's now Iraq, um, in about 3000 BC. In Egypt, they made their papyrus into scrolls. Um, in China, they invented a, 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 a form of printing um, because the Chinese script is so complex, as those of you who were in the, the talk this morning realize, <laughs> and those of you, anybody who's, who's tried to learn Chinese, um, they didn't invent a, a form of movable type. They, they carved pages, whole pages, on a, on a wooden block, carved them in reverse, so even harder, and then put a piece of paper, put some ink on them, put the piece of paper on, pressed it down, and you got a printed page. So they did that from about 200 BC. In Rome, this is an ama amazing new technology. They invented the, the codex, or book. So they, they took, instead of using a scroll, they, they cut the pages and stitched them together. So that was an um, amazing new technology. And they, they did actually invent movable type in China later on. But it didn't really catch on because um, of the complexity of the script and also in Korea. And then a major, major new development in Italy in the 11th century was indexes. So this was the search engine of the, of the time. Because <laughs> you've, got, you've got a great big book and you want to find something in it. If you've got no index, all you've got to do is you've got to go through every page and try and find what you're looking for. If you've got an index, you can do it no, to no problem at all. And then in the, in the 13th century in Italy, they invented glasses. So people who have problem with, with reading could, could read more easily. And then in the 14th century, another development, silent reading, because before then, when people read, they read aloud. So if you'd gone to a medieval monastery, everybody would be kind of mumbling to themselves as they're reading. But then people started reading silently. This is a, 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 something that people found amazing. <laughs> Have you got a question? Yes, no, uh, an observation, yes. It was, uh, was it Saint, Saint Augustine? No, I don't think it was Augustine, it was another Yeah, yeah. The, that time yeah, but it didn't really catch on until later. <laughs> <laughs> and then in, in, um, in the early 15th century in Europe, in Germany, we had the first printing presses, which were adapted from wine presses. And that, that really spread literature across Europe, and people started reading much more. Okay, so what are the principles involved in writing? Now, one major one in early writing systems is the Rebus principle, where you use a picture to represent a word. So this is, I've, I've used Egyptian hieroglyphs here. So I see you. It's not a you, it's a lamb actually, but you get the idea. <laughs> That's not what they mean in, in Egyptian. 
I just chose pictures that, that fit. And then I invented, or started to invent, a new script <laughs> based on the Egyptian hieroglyphs. This is actually how the first alphabet was invented. I'll get, get onto that later. But I took Egyptian hieroglyphs and then found ones with the right sounds. So this is the alcophonic principle. So you're using the, the name of the letter and what it represents to represent the sound. So it's the initial sound of the letter. So ox stands for O, man for M, and so on. So um, I, I managed to find most of the letters of English and rep something re representing them in, in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. So that's a possible way. If, if there wasn't an alphabet for English, there was only Egyptian, and you wanted to write English, you might, might do that. OK. What types of writing systems are there? Now, one type is the abjad, or consonant al uh, alphabet. And this is, you have consonants, which you write, and you can write vowels, but you don't have to. It's optional. So the, the first example is Hebrew. And the text at the top is how it's normally written. No vowels. Some of the vowels are represented by consonants. So for example, an E sound is represented by a Y, and an U sound by a W, and so on. But the short vowels are not written. The, the lower, this one, has, has the vowels written in them. And they're the dots and things above and below the letters. And the transcription, this one is a kind of literal transcription in the direction it's written. So it starts here. It's written from right to left. And this one is with all the vowels in it. This one is a phonemic alphabet. This is a more familiar one. The, English al the Latin alphabet, the Greek alphabet are all phonemic. This is Georgian and this is Armenian. So you have a separate letter for each vowel and consonant. Um, in some languages, like English, some letters have more than one pronunciation, and you can use different letters to write the same sounds. In other, other la languages, you might have one, one sound for one letter. There's a lot of variation. Um, now these two, we have, these are abugidas, also alpha syllabaries or syllabic alphabets. So here, the, the, the letters, for example, this one is a sa, a sa. That represents the consonant plus the vowel. And this one, without this, this bit, is a ba. But with this bit, it comes b, because this, this bit represents the i. So these the red bits change the inherent vowel of the consonant syllable. That's how they work. So sometimes they come on the right-hand side, sometimes on the left-hand side, sometimes underneath, and sometimes on top. So when you're reading, you kind of read each one as a syllable unit. So that's a syllable unit, and that's one, and that's one. And then this, this is um, Inuktitut, I think, or possibly Cree, I can't remember. It's one of those two. But in this one, um, the orientation of the letter determines the vowel. So for example, this one is me, and um, no, all, all the, they're all me in there, or that one. This one is uh, way, but who is it? Yeah, this one is way. Okay, when it's pointing this way, um, <laughs> yeah, that should be wa. Okay, or we. Yeah, okay. So that's we, and that's and that's way. When it's pointing upwards like that, it's we, and when it's pointing downwards, it's way. So that's how it, basically how it works. And that's ni when it's pointing that way, and when it's pointing downward up up like that, it's another one. But it changes the sounds when you change the the. Um, the orientation. And this script was invented by a, a British missionary called James Evans in the 18, 1840s. And originally it was for Ojibwe, one of the, the native languages of Canada. And he, he came up with this, apparently inspired by the Pittman shorthand script, 
and um, I think uses somewhat similar kind of rotation of symbols. Uh, but apparently the church authorities weren't happy with this. They thought he should, choose, should use the Latin alphabet. So, um, but the, but the, the people he, he invented it for, they liked it. They thought it was really good. They called him the man who made birch bark talk because <laughs> they wrote it on, on birch bark. And because it, it, it's quite a simple system, it's quite easy to, to, le to learn. Most of the people who spoke the, these languages, they learned it very quickly. So it's very popular. Then we have the syllabaries. Now these have a separate symbol for each syllable. So they're, they're based on syllables. This one, I'm sure you, you'll recognize, is, is Cherokee. And this is kind of loosely based on Latin letters. Originally, the man who invented this, Sequoia, he tried to make a kind of script where he had a separate symbol for each, each word but he soon realized there's just too many words, and that was too complex. And then he made a kind of more, um, more calligraphic script with lots of um, extra bits on it. But when he went to the printers and said, hey guys, can you, can you make a, a typeface for this? They said, no, sorry, that's too complex. <laughs> so he went back and he invented this. So there's, there's, no, there's no cursive form of this. No, he invented it, but no one could make, make a typeface for him. So this is a, a print-only only script, really. And this one, does anybody recognize this one? <laughs> yes, I thought so. This is E from South China. And this is one of the most complex um, syllabaries around. It's got, does it, do you know how, 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 many, how many syllables it has? 700. Is it 700? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of syllables. And you can see, <laughs> it's, it's a very, very complex script. So there's a separate one of these for every syllable in the language. And now we have the most complex scripts. So this is, this is um, Chinese, this is uh, traditional characters. So these, this is a mixed script. Originally, the characters were based on, on pictograms, so pictures of things. So this was originally a picture of a person. And this was a, a sprout growing out of the ground, which is, became to mean birth. And this one is a beard or a root, but it came to mean something else. <coughs> this one originally was a nose. And apparently in China, this is something I didn't know, when you say me, you don't point to your chest, you point to your nose to indicate me. And this one is not a sprout, but this is from a field, so this one Without here, that's, that's a field, but that's, that's a sprout coming out of the field. And that somehow came to mean from. I'm not sure how that worked, but that's how it, how it did. This one is the simplest character in Chinese. <laughs> it means one, it's a line. And this one is a scale, kind of a, a balanced scale. So that came to mean flat, ping. And then you have ide ideograms, which um, these represent a kind of idea. So this is something above the line. If you flip it over, it becomes down, below. And then you have compounds. So these can be compounds of pictograms and ideograms. Or so this one is. You got earth two, and uh, this one tai. Actually, that's the phonetic, the phonetic. So this 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 kind of compound is the most common sort of character in China. So you've got two parts. One part which gives you a clue to the, the meaning of it. So this actually means in. So, the, so tu, this, is, this is the semantic part. This means earth. So somehow that's associated with being in something. The location, yeah. And this part, this, this is pronounced zai. So this, this part gives you a clue to how it's said. So this is, this is pronounced tai. So it kind of rhymes, it sort of sounds a bit like Tai, Tai, sort of similar. <laughs> so uh, uh, so uh, the phonetics, because the pronunciation of Chinese has changed over time, the original phonetics might have been closer to the, the actual spoken word, but it's changed over time. So this one combines 
move the tree, and guan, which means stalk. So guan is the phonetic here. This one's pronounced chuen. So it sounds vaguely like guan, but not very much. <laughs> and tree, um, this means, what's this one? Um, what does this one actually mean on its own? <coughs> Power, authority, yeah. So the, the uh, tree there doesn't really give you much clue to the, the meaning of it. So you can see how complex Chinese is. OK. Now, you might be familiar with scripts that are written left to right and right to left. This is, this is the Amharic script from Ethiopia. And this is um, Syriac, um, which is used in Iran and Iraq. It's a Semitic language related to Arabic. It works in a similar way. But there are also languages that are written vertically. This is Japanese, written from right to left, going down like this. And this is Mongolian, which is written from left to right. And this, this, this script was originally like this, but they flipped it round 90 degrees, because they wanted it to look more like Chinese, which is written vertically at the time. But then you got more unusual ones. This one, anybody recognize this one? Yes. This, yes, this is um, Hungarian runes. This is an old script that was used in Hung Hungary. And it's written in, in a style called Bostofidion, which in the, comes from a Greek word meaning as the ox turns. So this goes this way, this way, this way, <laughs> this way. And some early scripts, like ancient Greek and even early Latin, was written like this. And then we have, this is Mayan from, from Mexico. And this is written in <laughs> paired columns. So you start here, there, in zigzags. And this, this one, this is Batak, Batak from um, Philippines. And you, you write it going up like this. When you actually read it, more like this. <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> I haven't found out. And this one, this is the Orwam or Orgum script from ancient Ireland. It was also used in Britain to write Irish, Welsh, Latin, Pictish. And this is possibly a kind of cipher, because nobody knows exactly where it comes from. It might have been developed from a kind of numeric, a, a numeral system. But it was written around the edges of stones. And you start here and go around like this. So, but you could also write it uh, normally, left to right, horizontal lines on manuscripts. But the, this, this was used kind of to mark territory, borders between people's, people's land, and also on kind of gravestones and such like. Seven. Yeah. There's also a script found in Japan that has not yet been deciphered, but it's written from the center and then it's far from outwards. Okay, I, ha I haven't come across that one. <laughs> you can tell me about it later, maybe. Okay, so how many, how many scripts are there? Okay, according to Ethnologue, there are 7,105 languages. 3,570 have writing systems. 696 have no, no writing system, have never been written and nobody knows about the rest of them. So at least half the world's lang languages have a way of, of writing them, and the other half don't. But many of them, if they've been studied by linguists, they would have made a way to write them, either with the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet, or they might have, might have devised their own system. Um, there are currently about 70 or 71 alphabets in regular use, um, 33 used to some extent, but not in everyday use, and at least 80 extinct ones. This is how many there are in Omniglot at the moment. There may be others. As you said, there's, there's one in Japan. Um, and uh, anybody has any writing systems that aren't on Omniglot that they'd like to be there, <laughs> come and tell, talk to me at some point. Um, so 19 of them are abjads, 56 are alphabets, 71 ab abogidas, 22 syllabaries and 16 somatophonetic scripts. 
and these are the mi most widely used ones, Latin by, by a long way, Latin Roman alphabet. Okay, finally we get on to the, the main part of the talk. This is what a clay tablet actually looks like. And these, these, before writing was invented, people in the Middle East, from about 8000 BC, they were using these as a kind of receipt when they, they, they bought something or sold something. And they, they made these little, little tokens, and these represented different kind of goods. They were anim animals or, or um, food or whatever they were buying and selling. And they would make these tokens, and they would press them into the into the outside of the tablet, and then they would make a hollow in the middle and put them inside. So you didn't have to open it up to see what was inside because they had the impressions on the outside. Then someone had the bright idea that you don't need to make these, you can just make the shapes on the outside of the tablet. And then many thousands of years later, this developed into a, a way of writing. But before then, from about 8000 BC, people in parts of Romania and Serbia were possibly using a writing system. This hasn't been deciphered. Nobody knows if it is a writing system or a form of proto-writing, but this is what it looks like. And um, so we, we don't know if it was a form, an alphabet or a syllabary or anything like that. It had about 100, 100 um, symbols, so that would suggest that it might have been some kind of syllabic script, because alphabets generally have less fewer than a uh, hundred, but we don't know. <coughs> and then in ancient China, from about 6,600 BC, in uh, Jiahu, in Henan province, and other parts of China, they were using symbols like these. And nobody knows if this was, this was a writing system, some kind of proto-writing or something else, maybe a calendar, form of numbers. And then in, in ancient India, in the Indus Valley, from about 3,500 BC, they had this, these symbols. Now some people claim they've deciphered this. They said it was, it was used to write some kind of early form of uh, Dravidian or Sanskrit. And someone actually sent me a dictionary of this, this script, saying they've deciphered it. But we don't know. We don't know what language it was used for, um, what these symbols represent. But the, the first definite writing system we, we know about comes from ancient Mesopotamia, which is in what is now southern Iraq, um, from about 3600 BC. So this possibly developed from those clay tablet symbols. And they, um, it was a kind of syllabic script with alphabetic bits, and they had um, some symbols to represent whole words as well. So it's a mixture, quite a complex script with up to a, a thousand different symbols. And originally it was used to write Sumerian, which is, um, as far as we know, not related to any other language. But it was adapted to write other languages, such as Akkadian, Hittite, Persian, and Ugaritic. And Akkadian and Sumerian, in some ways, their, their relationship resembles Chinese and Japanese, because Sumerian was an isolating language, where, but Akkadian was a more... A, a glutinative language like Japanese. So when they adapted it, they borrowed lots of Sumerian words. And they actually continued to use Sumerian in writing because it was a prestigious um, language long after people stopped speaking it. Like kind of ancient Chinese, classical Chinese, in fact. So that was the, the world's first script, possibly. And then Around about the same time, maybe a few hundred years later, in ancient e Egypt, they started writing as well. And they had a much more complex script, which um, they used things that rep represent everyday things, animals, people, objects. And for example, this one, these, these bits, they spell out the letter, the, the name. I'm not sure how to, how to pronounce this. I mean, like, there's no vowels written, so it's, you can only guess those. And this one tells you it's a crocodile. And then this one, you've got, these, are, these represent the phonetics and this, the sun and so on. And this is what the script was actually called, the words 
of the gods because they believed that the god Toth actually invented this and gave it to the people of Egypt. So this was used until 396 AD uh, in Egypt and then people forgot about it and it was deciphered in the, in the 19th century by various people. I won't go into that, I haven't got time, but you can read all about it <laughs> in various places. So this is the ancient world. So Sumeria was here, and then Babylon was another place where they used the script, and Akkad, and Persia, and then this is where the Egyptian script was used, and other scripts spread into it from there. So um, now we, we had some introductions to Chinese script this morning, so I'm sure some of you are familiar with it. It actually first appeared in, in fully developed form around 2500, two, 2100 BC in China. Now the, the symbols they were using much earlier than that, they were, they, they were used and then there's no evidence there was any connection with the later script. So there's a long time when there's no no remains with any kind of writing on. So this is the first definite writing system we have. And it changed over time. So the original sim uh, symbols were like pictures. So this is horse. And you can see how it became more and more stylized and it got flipped around and, and eventually you ended up with this, which looks nothing like a horse. <laughs> and this is, this is ma. So these, these scripts are still used regularly and this one to some extent in some fonts you can get that this one is used on name seals so instead of writing and signing things in china they have a, a carved chop they call it to only and they use these these kind of characters on them so the chinese script as we saw on this morning if you were in the talk has been adapted to write japanese korean vietnamese and other languages in china Now this, this, is, this was the first alphabetic script. This developed from ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. And apparently there was um, people in Egypt who spoke a, an early Semitic language related, with an, an ancestor of Hebrew and Arabic and such like, and Phoenician. And they saw the Egyptian hieroglyphs and they thought, oh, it wouldn't be nice to, to write something. So like I did with the the English form of the, the alphabet I, I invented earlier, um, they, they took, took hieroglyphs and applied them to their own language. So in, in that language, the word Alep was ox and bet was house and gamel was a, a throw stick. So they had a picture of the thing. So this, this represented a B sound, and that's a Q sound and that's a D and so on. So this represented an alphabet, there was no vowels and each one had several variations. And this was used in ancient Egypt, Egypt and it spread around the Middle East. And it was used um, from 190 BC. Um, and it became this. This is the Phoenician alphabet. You can see the, the letters now don't resemble the things they represent. They re retain the names, but they don't look like oxes and houses and everything. So the, the sounds and the names and the order was retained, but not the actual physical um, appearance. So the Phoenicians used this. The Phoenicians lived in what is now Lebanon and Israel, Palestine, that kind of area. And they, they traveled all over the, the uh, Mediterranean. And some of them um, went to uh, Italy. Now, before we get to that, in the meantime, in, the, in Central America, in Mexico, the Olmecs were starting to make some interesting symbols. From about 1000 BC, this is the earliest form of possible writing in, um, in uh, Mesoamerica. We don't know if this is some kind of script, but um, this is the possibly a, a precursor of a script that was used in ancient Mexico. 
about 500 years later, the Mayans, we saw the Mayan script earlier, the one with the zig zigzag pattern, that, that came possibly developed from this. And that was the first definite writing system in um, ancient America. So going back to Europe, the, um, the Greeks saw the Phoenician alphabet and they thought, oh, wouldn't be nice if we had one as well. <laughs> so they, they, they uh, adapted the Phoenician, al Phoenician alphabet and the Phoenicians didn't bother to write the vowels like the like Arabic and Hebrew don't do anymore, they don't do it the, to this day, but um, the Greeks wanted to write their vowels, so they took some of the letters from the Phoenician for, for sounds they didn't use and adapted them for vowels. So this is the first proper alphabet. And you can see it's not the same as the, the modern Greek alphabet. It's changed over time. And originally it was written um, like in a, in a Buster Freedom pattern. But over time it's settled down to left to right. And then the Greeks colonized parts of Italy. And then the Etruscans and Romans they thought they, 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 they developed their own alphabet, so they adapted the Greek alphabet. And this is the very early form of the Latin alphabet. This, this, these are, each, each letter has several variations. So it's changed over time, as you, can, as you can see. And the direction has changed over time. The actual why some, some alphabets are written left to right, and left to right to left, or top to bottom, nobody knows. That's, that's another, another talk. Um, so, the Etruscans were the first people in Italy, after the Greeks, to, to write, and then the, the um, Romans adapted their, their alphabet, and other people in Italy, such as the Umbrians and the Oscans, they also did the same. And then, in the meantime, in ancient India, this was possibly inspired by the scripts that were being invented in the Middle East, or possibly and they've developed from them. This is the first Abogida, this, the Brahmi script, and it works very, it's, in a, it's an Abogida, so it's each one, you've got Ka, and that's modified to, sh to show different vowels, and each letter would be the same. So this is the ancestor of all the scripts used in India, um, Southeast Asia, and um, yeah, India and Southeast Asia. And nobody knows um, if this was orig an original invention or copied from another script. But this goes back to 500 BC, so it's a very early, early script. Okay, so that's, that's the main, um, a very short history of, of writing systems. There are many more writing systems in the world um, and um, new ones are being invented all the time. I've invented a few. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I uh, adapted um, Julian Fu Hao, Bopo Mo for the Chinese phonetic script and made my own kind of curly version of it. And I made a, another script based on British Sign Language finger spelling. <laughs> you can see those all on Omni Lot. And if, if any of you have invented the script, and you would like it to be to appear online? <laughs> Send it to me. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Uh, do I need to use the microphone? I was curious. Uh, previous slide. Thank you so much, by the way, for this yeah. uh, information. Uh, you said that the ancient hieroglyphs were used up to a point and then people forgot about them? Yeah. Do, do you have one of these slides was the one they replaced them with? I'm interested to know what they used instead. Um, well, yeah, well, Egypt was taken over by the Greeks, so they started using the Greek alphabet, basically. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about demotic or whatever it is pronounced? Yeah, yeah, the the, um, the hieroglyphs, the ones I showed you, they were the kind of the formal forms that were used in monuments and on kind of tomb tomb paintings and things for everyday everyday use. They had more cursive versions, hieratic and demotic they were called, and they were simplified versions. S the same basic structure, but simplified and fewer fewer glyphs. 
So uh, you explained the Brahmi script being yeah. the kind of the seed script for all Indian and Southeast Asian languages. Possibly. So I was <laughs> believing that, uh, I speak Tamil, that's my yeah. mother tongue, but I was believing that uh, Tamil was kind of seminal and it was giving rise to Dravidian languages, the proto-Dravidian languages. So correct me if I'm wrong, is, is Brahmi the basic script which, uh, which gave rise to the Dravidian script also or? Um, I'm not absolutely sure of that. Okay. Definitely the, the North Indian ones, but I'm not sure of it. Yeah, exactly. South Indian so ones I, as well. So I, I thought the North Indian languages, almost all of them came from Sanskrit, yeah. and the South Indian, they all came from Tamil. Yeah. So I, then I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure about the history of the Tamil script. OK, OK. Well, to question, what remind what you say? Uh, you. <laughs> That's uh, when you say uh, where a uh, script comes from, there are two. Two, two way of, of uh, interpreting it. The first is, as you, you have uh, demonstrated from, from, from the, the, the proto-Semitic to the, to the Greek, yeah. as there is, you use the signs. But if you analyze, for example, a minion alphabet, <laughs> you use the idea of an alphabet, then you invent your signs, as you have done yeah. yourself. Exactly. So, so that's Brahmi, Brahmi is the idea of alphabet in India. Then the Indian language could have developed new symbols for the same things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Question for you is, yeah. what do you know about the, 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 the problem, the discussion about uh, relationships with, uh, among Egyptian, or well, uh, old ancient Egyptian and, and um, Sumeric scripts? So in s some, some scholars say, well, actually, uh, Egyptian is coming from, is, 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 been, is a borrowing ideal borrowing from, from Sumerian, or others say, no, 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 first Egyptian, then Sumerian. What do you, do, what do you know about this discussion, this, and this yeah. problem there? Well, in the sources I, 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 I've looked at, some people, yeah, some people say the Egyptians got the idea of writing from, from the Sumerians, um, but they invented their own version of it. And others say they actually copied some of the symbols. And then a few people say they, they came up with the idea themselves. It's another original. So this, 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 the discussion is about that. Yeah, I, I, there's no conclusion. We, no, we can't be sure. Um, I used to read that uh, the, the idea of writing, in in its pictographic or ideographic form, uh, was born seven times independently uh, in the world history, mm. namely uh, Maya, the latest, and uh, the, the, the first one, uh, Babylonian. And then Egyptian, uh, Chinese, and so on. Um, and but the alphabet, the alphabetic writing, uh, was born only once. Uh, is what, what do you think? Is is it correct, or is maybe just? Uh, I mean, the, I mean the, that's, the that's that's possible. Yeah, I mean, if 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 you say the Indian scripts were not m inspired by others, but actually they were developed from other scripts, then you could say. Ancient Egyptian, the well, no, no, the proto Sinaitic, the proto Canaanite script was the ancestor of every single alphabetic script in the world. But it's it's hard to be sure of that. Okay, and, and the, well, the seven uh, different uh, yeah pictographic or ideographic systems. Lo so let's say logographic yeah. systems. Well, you got you got Egypt, Egypt, Sumeria, China, Mesoamerica, and what's the other uh, ones? Indus. Indus, in but we're not sure if that's a script. Uh, yeah, it's not yet deciphered, actually. Yeah, and, and then uh, and then um, Luvian, well, Anatolic. Yeah, um, possibly. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. Know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Hello, um, Hello. Have you heard of the Voynich manuscript? I have. Yes. You have, and presumably you've heard of Linear A as well. Uh, yes. Now, both of these are examples of something that is probably writing but has not been decoded, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. There are a number of scripts that haven't yes. been deciphered. So I'm, I'm wondering if when, when a linguist is uh, confronted with something like that, they have no idea whether it's even writing or what language it writes, etc. What are the kinds of processes that go into trying to decipher that? Do you know anything about that? I, I do know, yes. Um, so, for example, with ancient Egyptian, when people f forgot how to, how to um, read it. What, what originally 
when people were try trying to start, started trying to decipher it, they were thinking each symbol represented a whole concept, a whole word. And um, it was when they discovered the Rosetta Stone that they realized there was a, 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 a bilingual text in, in, in hieroglyphs, um, hieratic script, and ancient Greek. And that, that kind of gave the key that they could be partly phonetic. So um, that, that, that helps. But with a script that's um, completely unknown, what we do, we take an inventory of all the characters um, and try and work out what possible um, type of script it might be. Is it an alphabet or a syllabary? Statistically, yes. So the more that there are, the more likely it is to be a, a syllabary or a semanto phonetic script. Um, if you know the language that was used to write, that, or a, a, a descendant of that language, so with ancient Egyptian, the Coptic language, which is used by Christians in Egypt, it's a descendant of ancient Egyptian. That, is a, that, that helped decipher them. Okay, but none of these things are available for the Voynich manuscript, for exactly, example. Yes, so exactly, yes, exactly. So with that, that... So do you believe that the Voynich manuscript will never be decoded? Uh, probably, probably never, no. Okay. <laughs> and say, okay. same with the Indus script. I mean, you can try and fit it to, to languages, and if you can see patterns... <laughs> you, if you see patterns in how, how kind of symbols are used, you might say, okay, this might be some kind of prefix or suffix, and then this language might fit with this kind of language family, and then you could try and decipher words based on that. So there's, there's various techniques you can use. But if you don't know what language was written, then it's very hard to decipher a script. Oh, so question, question, yeah? question in the remark? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I normally think that that's, uh, the alphabetical script has been originated just once. So it means that, uh, that uh, Korean Hangul uh, comes from, uh, from Europe or from. Uh, it's, it's quite late uh, system. This yes, alphabetical yes. Yeah. Where is it, which is the, the origin of this, of this idea. Idea, of course. The mm. science looks like Chinese, but the yeah. idea is not, it's not Chinese. Yeah. Well, one theory is that that was based on the, a script from Mongolian called Pag, Pagspa, or Pagspa, possibly, which had similar kind of um, si um, shapes of symbols. So, so, so uh, Brahmi up to, the, to, to, to Mongolian yeah, and then that's, that's one theory, but another theory is it's, it's original invention. Because the, the shapes of the symbols somehow re represent the, the position of the tongue and the teeth and such like that. 